Hello everyone, I'm Kijun Lee. I'm glad to introduce you uh, to a new case report published in Korean Journal of Orthodontics in uh, July 2022. This is a case report and the title is Conservative Orthodontic Treatment for Severe Pathologic Migration Following uh, Total Glossectomy. Here's a 43-year-old lady who had a crowding as her chip complaint. Have a look at the uh, initial uh, intraoral view. She has a very severe crowding, especially in the lower arch. And also in, in canine and premolar, she has a, a relatively severe uh, gingival recession. In the occlusal view, it is very unique that she doesn't seem to have the tongue structure. Yes, she has a very unique medical history uh, that uh, that is uh, total glossectomy because of the tongue cancer she had um, several years ago. And probably as a result, uh, because of the um, lack of the balance between the buccal force and lingual force, this kind of severe crowding may have been resulted. Let's have a look at the uh, serial panoramic view. And on top, the panoramic view before the total glossectomy uh, shows that the uh, relatively decent alveolar bone support along with the decent uh, incisor alignment. And three years after uh, surgery and six years after surgery, she has grown, she has developed uh, even more severe dental crowding. So this kind of a very extraordinary severe crowding may have been resulted from lack of the muscle force between uh, buccal and lingual side. So total glossectomy without any supervision may lead to this kind of a detrimental uh, crowding. So this is the current status when she came to orthodontic department and she, we had to do something even if she doesn't have a very large tongue structure. And especially uh, we had to uh, uh, keep in mind that she has a very reduced alveolar bone support in the uh, lower incisor segment. Uh, even if all uh, cancer therapy has uh, has been finished uh, years ago, we still had to keep an eye on the uh, periodontal support and possible bone response to the uh, possible orthodontic treatment. From the lateral cephalogram, she had a class 2 skeletal pattern with the excessive uh, incisor overjet and deep bite. All right, just because um, uh, without orthodontic treatment, without orthodontic intervention, the crowding must become worse and worse. So we had to do something. Initially, we started alignment and leveling with the regular bracket and wire in, in this way. So uh, from the frontal view, it looks like the uh, alignment and leveling is going well without any problem. And on the side, we had to choose uh, which, which tooth to pull out. And uh, like, like in, as you see in the occlusal view, uh, two of the lower incisors has been uh, sticking out of the um, main uh, arch wire. So uh, just because we are not able to uh, align these two teeth, we will have to uh, pull out these two incisors. And also, uh, if, if we pull out the lower incisors, we might have to pull out the upper premolars as well, which is a big commitment, commitment for such a, a patient with a history of um, uh, cancer. was not easy, but we had to uh, do this, uh, make this kind of radical decision. And there's another thing that we have to pay attention to, which is the reduced alveolar bone loss in the lower arch. Have a look at the alveolar bone support immediately after leveling and alignment. Even if we pull out two of the uh, lower incisors, the rest of the teeth may be uh, surrounded very limited alveolar bone. So we had to um, uh, find a clue to be able to um, get out of this uh, troublesome situation. In the literature, uh, they say it has already been said that regular exclusive uh, uprighting of the molar may lead to uh, loss of the attachment level. So this kind of extrusive movement uh, may be very detrimental for especially periodontally compromised tooth. In contrast, 
in one of the animal experiments when they intruded the molars at least the uh, attachment level was very well maintained it did not improve but it did not worsen the situation so in order to maintain the attachment level we might have to choose uh, intrusion rather than extrusion have a look at the histological view the relative position between the attachment and all the uh, uh, supra alveolar fibers relative to the level of the uh, cemental animal junction is very well maintained and as a result uh, from one of the uh, clinical studies we can see the along with the uh, incisor uh, intrusion the gingival margin and mucogingival junction and also alveolar crest would follow the tooth movement so it, 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 it doesn't mean that intrusion is very safe and helpful, but intrusion does not at least worsen the attachment level. So in times of trouble, if we have to choose between extrusion and intrusion from a histological level, we might have to go for intrusion. Then the next question is, just because we are in very dangerous situation, we need to produce a very, very precise uh, force system that will not cause round tripping of the teeth because um, going back and forth will uh, make the alveolar bone support even worse and worse so first as a first step we need to localize the central resistance of a lower incisor segment which was found uh, slightly distal to the uh, canine crown as you can see in the fine in this finite element study and again uh, back in uh, 2011 we had another uh, finite element study done in order to uh, figure out the best possible combination of a mini screw position and the force factor to be able to intrude six incisor segment in the lower arch. And the result was it had to be oblique force factor coming from the mini screw in, inserted on the distal side of the canine. So this is this corresponds to the possible position of the lower uh, central resistance of the lower incisor segment. So everything makes sense. So we will choose either 2E or 2F combination to be able to intrude lower incisor segment. Again, this plot uh, confirms the relatively stable intrusion before and after force application in 2E and 2F combination as you can see so we will apply the same rule for this particular case as i told you we were obliged to pull out upper premolars which was a very very big commitment for this um, uh, this particular patient and and also the lower incisor had to be intruded without causing round tripping back and forth so we inserted a mini screw on the distal side of the canine, which is a premolar in this particular case because we pulled out the lower incisor and we are trying to intrude the all six incisor segment as a whole, as a single unit without uh, causing round tripping. As you see, uh, there's a constant intrusive force factor and also distalizing force factor to be able to maintain the lower incisor axis and also upper incisor axis and after a while we were able to close the gap in this way and and this uh, needed a very precisely controlled lower incisor intrusion uh, this is the occlusal view after treatment as you see there's uh, no uh, tongue structure and we will have to maintain the lower incisor alignment as it is permanently for the rest of her life. And as a matter of fact, she was very happy that uh, she had, now she has a very well aligned teeth. And also we were very happy because in the middle of the treatment, we were very shocked to see the uh, reduced alveolar bone level in the lower incisor segment. But uh, following the uh, relatively stable intrusion of the lower incisor, and I can tell you, at least we did not uh, make it worse. We maintained uh, attachment level of the lower incisor segment, at least from a clinical standpoint. We were not able to have a look at the histological view of this um, uh, situation, but uh, we can tell, we can say, at least we 
uh, barely maintain the alveolar level after treatment. So we will maintain uh, the uh, alignment as it is for the rest of our life. This is a cephalometric superimposition before and after treatment. There was a tiny little amount of a lower incisor flaring, but majority of the tooth uh, movement was done by pure intrusion of the lower incisor which allowed retraction of the upper incisor as well because she had a very deep bite in the very, very beginning. And this is a smile before and after treatment and she has a very nice smile after treatment and she's very happy. So uh, again, in view of the whole uh, treatment sequence, we can, we can say, we can conclude this kind of a precisely controlled tooth movement uh, can restructure a very uh, challenging case and challenging occlusion, especially as the patient is getting old and also especially when she has a very specific or unique uh, medical history like cancer. So at, as always, we need to give a very precise force uh, and also we need a very um, a precise interpretation of the force system in order to produce a good force system we need a basic information such as a, a central resistance and, and force factor and things like that. So this is a summary of our uh, case report and thank you very much for your very kind attention.